Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. If you haven't seen the show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job, I do elder law at, uh, at Myrick O'Connell. We are actually right here in Westboro. There are about 20 of us here and another 40 in Worcester and 10 in Boston. But this show is not about elder law. It is about my friends Frank and Mary and their goal, which is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if you're Frank and Mary, that means you don't want to move. You want to stay right here. You don't want to move in with your kids unless they live in Westboro. And even then, maybe not. So we've tried to get a variety of guests to come on. And for that, I've, I've always got my great colleague and sidekick, Shelby Marshall, your your selectman, who has been got, gotten great people to come on in recent months and weeks. But for today, she figured she would give us a special guest, Shelby. <laughs> Good morning, Arthur. Always great to see you. Um, yes, so um, to our viewers, I'm so excited that today's guest is not, none other than Mr. Arthur Bergeron. <laughs> applause, applause, applause. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so, you know, um, uh, we've had a, a variety of guests. Um, for those of you um, who have been following Frank and Mary for a while, and, and Arthur sort of referred to it, he he's done a number of seminars. Um, used to have a Bergeron brief show here right on Westboro TV where he talked a lot about elder law and things related to that. Um, and we collectively, as we came together to kind of bring this show to you, said, well, let's do something different. Um, but, you know, in these times, um, uh, sometimes it's important to go back to basics. And so I wanted to talk with Arthur, bring his experience to the show, to bring um, Frank and Mary some information on what's going on in his world as it relates to elder law, given that we're in a pandemic. So our, um, you know, let's start with kind of like what has changed, like what's, what's different about the conversation now or is anything. So I think what's different about the, there, there, there are two kinds of things that are different about the conversation. One is that a lot more times the conversation is virtual, right? When did that ever happen before? You know, you do like a phone call, right? And we still do some phone calls with folks, but but a lot of times, especially for people who are new, uh, they want to see you, and I can't blame them for that. And they actually, they get to see you more on the on the Zoom call than they do if you come to the office because you're not wearing a mask, you know. So so a piece of the change is that we just are seeing a lot of people um, virtually now. That also means. That a lot of times that I'm talking when I'm talking to someone because my clients are all older. As you think you've heard me say, my median client age is 74. My youngest client is 50 under is over 55, right? Yep. So you look awfully young to be even talking to me. So, <laughs> so a lot of times those folks are on like with one of their kids who help them do the Zoom call, and a lot of times are also the kind of person that they want to be counting on. You know, if you're if you're one of the many seniors who have like a child or a good friend, but typically a child that you can really count on, that's like the greatest blessing. I mean, it was always the greatest blessing, but now more than ever, it's the greatest blessing, right? Because a lot of times you're feeling kind of stuck more in your house. So the first thing is that we just, the conversation is different. Um, people are obviously just staying home a lot more. So when, you know, when we, when we do, I do see folks, um, a lot of times I'll go to their house, Right, because they're really uncomfortable coming to the office. I mean, we still we still see people at the office, although you know, obviously we're socially distanced. There's a maximum number of people we can see. We've actually set up our conference rooms. They used to have you know eight or nine chairs, and now there's three. Right, yeah. and you're all just so you have to kind of yell, you know, when you're in this. But fortunately, you know, we're, we you know we have the we have the facilities that we can do all of that stuff. But increasingly, I see folks at home. That that was always true. Uh, when I was, as you know, I, I, my Thursdays are Ireland Day. I always go to Martha's Vineyard in Nantucket. So there I would always see people at their house because I was driving there. But it's kind of a new thing. For, and, and people were used to that, even talking to a number of professionals there. That's kind of how things got done yep. because so many of their folks come from off island, you know. But here, that's kind of a weird thing. You know, yep. you know you're really going to come to my house, you know. <laughs> You know, do I have to get it clean? I'm or, just gonna say. <laughs> oh no, you know, nothing special. I'm just the lawyer. You know, so that's where the conversation occurs. Now, in terms of the conversations themselves, um, 
a couple of things have happened. First of all, you know, whenever I do my presentations to seniors, I always say, you know, you talk about estate planning and all that stuff, but the most important thing, you've heard me say this many times, it's cheap, it's easy, you have to have a power of attorney, you have to have a healthcare proxy, right? So I think, and a lot of people would poo-poo that, because yeah. they, well, you know, I'm worried about the long run because I might die, but you know, I'm fine. I'm really fine, you yeah. know? And, and, and as a result of COVID, people have come to realize that, they're, that, that for everyone, not just for a few, for everyone, something can happen. And just like that, things yeah. have changed, you know? Yeah. And that in those situations, first of all, you do want somebody who can talk to the doctor for you, read the chart for you, even if you're kind of basically feeling okay. If you're like on a ventilator and you're in the hospital, maybe you don't want to feel like talking to those people. So you'd rather have um, that, a lot of times, a designated child. And once again, I really kind of encourage, I've always encouraged seniors, I said, you know, as you get older, do you really want your spouse to be having to talk to the doctor and the do the, you know, read the charts and do all that stuff? Or can't you lay this off on one of your kids? Right, because you think about it, right? You've sacrificed your whole life for these kids. You might as well make them do a little work yeah, for you. Do a little work, yeah. And in, and in the meantime, you don't want to be doing. You want to be with your spouse, yeah. you know. Now, once again, unfortunately, with a lot of in a lot of places now, you can't be with your spouse if right. they're in these facilities, right? But you know, so you yeah, pass it off to your kids. And the other piece is that power of attorney, which often that you know you and I have talked about that a power of attorney just gives someone everything that the other person could do, you know, on their behalf. And people will always say, well, like what? And I'll right. say, like, go to the bank, like, go to town hall and figure out your tax issue, like, call the insurance company, yep. like everything, everything that you could do that for which off, if, if, you, if, if your daughter calls and says, well, I'm just checking on my mom's bank account, they'll say, well, where's the power of attorney? Yeah. You know, yep. we don't care that you're the daughter. Where's the power of attorney? So, so that part's, changed. The other thing I think that has changed is people are more aware that they might die mm -hmm. and that they might die suddenly. So during this um, during this pandemic, I lost 13 clients mm -hmm. um, that have, have no one recently, but you know, during the spring and early summer, 13 sure. people of which 10, depending on how you evaluate, 10 or 11 were in a nursing home, you know, or in an assisted living, right? In a in a memory care unit in an assisted living, and the others were at home. But for everybody, for every senior, I think for folks around here, like most people know somebody, not necessarily somebody who died, mm -hmm. but somebody who had it. And they all realize that they're seniors. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if there's anybody that's gonna get it and die, it's them. You mm -hmm. know, that it's you know possible that somebody else is going to die, but only marginally possible. But for them, it's it's real. So right. it became it became very real. And so, folks are are contrary to what I had expected for this year. I had expected when COVID started that people would be just kind of cowering down and afraid to do anything or not wanting to do anything. Instead, it actually increased the number of people mm. who had maybe postponed this. You know, I mean, I talked to, so I've been at Myrick O'Connell now for um, 10 years. And over that time, I talked to, I now talk to probably about 10 new people a week. So that's about 500. Wow. Yeah, that's about 500 a year. Yep. And, and it's that's more than when I started, but say, say I've talked to, 4,000 people during yep. that time. And for all of them, after I speak to people, I always send them a letter to summarize what I said, because they, they'll they always be saying, they're scratching their heads by the end. What did he say again? Yes. You know? Right, yeah. And so, and so I, I tell them, I promise, you know, I'll just send you a letter, you know, and I don't or, charge. Or they're saying, them. I think I heard you said, send me a letter so I can review it with my kids. Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. And a lot of times they'll say, well, actually, you know, if there's a designated daughter, and it's typically a daughter, you know, send a copy to my daughter, you know, yeah. so we can kind of all talk about that, right? And I'll do those. And some of those, you know, will will decide to do something. And but most will mm -hmm. say, well, you know, I'm, it really, you know, it's not right that not the time is not right. And it's going to be expensive. And I really not rather not do that. Yeah. I have had so many of those people over the last four or five months, yep. actually come in with the letter. Oh, we just talked about this. 
the letter's dated 2016, you know? Yeah. But, but, you know, don't you remember? Uh, well, yeah. no. Well, that's why I'm glad you brought the letter, you know? So yeah, we yeah. can talk about that a little bit, right? right. Um, but they're now feeling like, I want to get this done, and I want to get it done now, yeah. you know? And yeah. so, and so it, it's actually, there have been more people that have called and more people that want it done right away. You know, so often, so like, for example, so right about, so right about this season, I'll always tell people like starting right about now, I'll tell people, you know, unless you've, you've, you've told us what you want to do, you know, and hired us to do something, we really can't guarantee we can get it done by the first of the year. Sure. Unless you're in by November 1st, because November and December are like crazy times. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Because I mean, the other <clears throat> It's kind of in parentheses, the other overlay, of course, of what's going on here is the election. Oh, what election? Oh, there's an election, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And, and it is, it is, it, and for those people for whom it, it appears to be increasingly likely that Joe Biden's going to win, right? No matter who they support, yep. right? Yep. The, 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 they're, they're, they're very concerned now because they're realizing that some of the rules of the road in terms of the estate planning may be changing. Uh, in the near term, and so they may be needing to adjust for that, for specifically for people who are doing planning based on, they've got tax issues, mm -hmm. they've got quite a bit of accumulated wealth, right? Yep. And, and, and con like, I'll give you the, the classic example. So, uh, and I'm actually doing, I'll talk about seminars in a second, but I'm actually sure. doing my, my monthly seminar on, is on gifting in December, because it's yep. Christmas time, you know, so yep. people, and, and so, Contrary to this kind of popular perception, there is actually, uh, there's no limit to the amount that you can give, um, just give away, right? There, okay. There's, people have this sense, oh. oh I thought there was, yeah. yeah. See? Yeah, they, seriously. Everybody. And, and you'll say. I thought it was like twelve to 15,000 per person. Yeah, and they'll say that, right? And so, and so the way, the way that works, so here's, here's your, here's my, my legal factoid here for the, for the day. There is the, the key to wait to understand this. First of all, there is no Massachusetts gift tax, right? Mm -hmm. And the receipt of a gift is not income. So from the child's perspective or from the person's perspective, whatever you give them, it's theirs. They don't, and it's not income, so they don't pay income tax on that. Okay. So it's all good if you're the, okay. the re recipient of this. But, the, but, but at the federal level, <clears throat> at the federal level, Oh, and you, by the way, you can give away everything that you own. I just wrote a letter on this to someone. He's got about a million five, and and he's got no children, and he's he giving contacted it, me, giving it all to the cousin, all giving it all to the cousin, right? And I told him, I said, well, you know, you know, the issue is if you wait until you're dead to give it to the cousin, yep. you're going to send, you're also going to send a check for about sixty thousand dollars to the Massachusetts Department of Revenue because there's an estate tax. If, on the other hand, you give it to them the day before you die, there's no tax, zero, right? And they said, you mean there's no look back? No, no, yeah. the day before you die. <clears throat> but then of course the, the conversation is, yeah, but you know, I'm probably not gonna be feeling really good the day before I die. Well, this is, this is a great point, you know, you're probably, there's a lot of other things going on. So going back to the power of attorney, what I told this guy is I said, all you have to do, if you have a power of attorney, mm -hmm. you wanna tell your attorney, right? That if you're really starting to slip, and it appears that you really don't need to have the million yep. five, you know, I mean, you want to keep some in reserve, but you don't need all of that, yep. right? Because you're dying. Yeah. And you just tell them, just give it all to the cousin, you know, yep. give it to the cousin, and 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 you're going to avoid all the estate tax, and and so you're not simply giving money to the government by mistake. Sure. So anyway, the reason why that is the case is that for, for federal purposes, there is a, a, a gift tax. The, the, way the, the way the system works, there's a combined gift and estate tax system. And okay. the way the system works is that right now, if you died um, single um, it, and, and you had an estate of more than 11, a little more than $11.4 million, there would be a federal estate tax and it's high, right? Mm -hmm. And so, but it, but it's eleven point four million dollars. So how many yes. people, even yeah. in Westboro? Yeah, that's not a lot of people, right? Yeah. I find, you know, I do a lot of work in Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. Not a lot of people there get yeah. to that number. There's no, there may be two, three, four, but not eleven, right? Yeah. 
And now, and, but it, it, but when the federal government set up their system, it was a combined gift and estate tax system because they wanted to make sure people didn't do what I just said you could do. Okay. All right, for federal purposes. The feds are not listening right now. And so, and so they said, in addition to the estate tax, there's going to be a gift tax, right? Um, and you have to pay a gift tax if you give over certain amounts. But there is an, there are two exclusions, right, to the gift tax. One, everybody knows. The other one, nobody knows. The one that everybody knows is that you can always give up to a particular amount, which used to be ten thousand dollars, but it's increased with inflation over time. It's now fifteen. Yep. In one year to one person, okay. No 15, tax. 000, no federal one tax. Person, and no federal is no federal gift tax, right? Mm -hmm. But the other exclusion, if you exceed those, is in addition to that, you have a lifetime gifting exclusion equal to the estate tax amount, which is now $11.4 million, ah. right? So unless you've got a ton of money, the gift tax is all a big joke, right? Got it. As long as the ah. federal gift tax exclusion or federal exclusion is $11.4 million, right? Okay. Now, this gift is gifting issue used to be significant before, it was a long, long time ago, it was like 15 years, no, 15, almost 20 years ago, before the federal government started really increasing their estate tax minimum. It used to be that it was a million dollars. Yep. And so that, so in that case, you really did need to go through this whole dance yep. about giving away, you know, so much per year per child because because you're you're you were gonna quickly bump up against your lifetime exclusion. At eleven million dollars, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. If that number changes back to a million dollars next year, right? then next year you're going to be having a problem unless you give it away this year, which is the reason why we are, we are, I mean, we're a big firm, you know, we deal with, we deal with people from with a whole range of incomes. Yep. I don't want to say we are being inundated with people, but there are a lot of people yeah. who are trying to figure out how to move money around before the end of this year. Cause they're afraid that, that if the Democrats take over the, the exclusion goes down and that they may not, they figured they'll at least grandfather it to like January, yeah. but but who knows if they'll grandfather it, you know? So as a result, but so that's a long way of saying, yeah, that's why things are really busy at the end of the year. Usually there are, there are tax related things, but this year it's exceptionally busy because of that for, yeah. for all of those reasons, right? So people are, are getting their stuff done. The the other thing that I that I think is is just true uh, in general of seniors, right, is that. And we've talked about it a lot in Westboro, you know, and I think Westboro is a good example of it. It's brought out the best in a lot of people, right? So you had a lot of a lot of seniors who were at, were and are at home, you know, and they're retired, and they had their kind of their routines, right? And now many of them don't have the same routines, right? Or they had a part time job and it's not there, and blah blah blah. But as a result, I think of. I think this has just brought out the the the, the kindness of a lot of people, mm -hmm. right? That you got a lot more people who are volunteering, not to do big global things, but like they're just talking to the lady down the street yep. that they never really knew, you know. And this is true of a lot of the younger people also that are yep. talking to their neighbor. Yep. Oh dear, oh Miss So and So, you know, you'd always see her walking, and she was out doing her garden and stuff, and you'd say hello. Yeah. But now, you know, people, you know, they'll stop in, you know, yeah. and they'll check, you know, do you need anything? Right. Do you need any food? And that's like, that's terrific. I guess the the best the best part about my practice is that I'm dealing with nothing but seniors and people who are dealing with seniors. See, but it's like your work, you know. I mean, you know, there are days you just can't stand your job, right? Because of the bureaucracy and calling the insurance companies and dealing with the provide, you know, all yeah. this stuff. But there are moments every day that are just great moments. Yeah, right. Absolutely. You know, yeah. like I, like like I've I've um so I'm I, as you know I turn I turn seventy. Uh, seems like yesterday I turned seventy in January, right? And so of course, increasing numbers of people are saying so so why are you going to are you <laughs> why are you retired, right? I mean, you've been a lawyer, you know, you must be okay financially. So kind of like, why aren't you retired? And, and the answer that I always tell people is, well, you know, I'm really not working anymore, right? Because as a result of, I mean, I let me put it this way. So this is, once again, this is, you heard about the Department of, two minutes on lawyering, right? As I've told you before, 
Um, I totally sympathize with lawyers who are practicing by themselves or there's just one or two of them together, because I did that for 33 years, right? Okay. I remember that week, you know, paying a secretary with a credit card, you know, because there was no money that came in. I remember doing, I remember typing up documents <laughs> and I am like the worst typist you've ever seen, right? <laughs> I once did one of those one of those little tests, uh, you know, because I, I wanted to learn typing. You know, the biggest mistake I made in my in my high school career, uh -huh. I was at St. John's and I took modern European history instead of typing. Yep. So stupid. <laughs> I know modern European history is so far gone. Right. I've been like typing terribly. Well, it's all five fingers, so it looks like I really can type, right? But I can't. So I did one of those little. Te I was going to try to do something online, right? Yeah. Which is like you know to learn, how, you know how to how to type, right? And they did the, like a little test, you know, and they give you a thing and you're supposed to type. And they and they and they and at the end of the test they score you and they said your speed was excellent, your accuracy was thirty eight percent, thirty eight, sixty two percent of my letters were wrong. I am like the only person whose typing is actually harder to read than their writing, right? <laughs> It's like it's like really terrible. So so fast forward now. I've been at Myrick for ten and a half years. I have not had to type a single document, right? Yep. You yep. can dictate it all. You got these people who were terrific at this, mm -hmm. right? I got all this backstaff. People call, oh, you know, I can you get this done right away? Mom's dying. Yes, yep. actually, I can get it done right away. Yeah. Like in an hour. Yeah. Because the staff is there, you know, because you just have all of this stuff. And I'll do one more. I'll do one more story. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to ask you, yep. because thank you for asking me on to the show. I really loved it. Right? <laughs> um, but I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do one more story, which yep. is, is so this is the story of, you know, it's not Myrick O'Connell in general, although Myrick O'Connell, I love. I, I mean, it's I, I was expecting Myrick O'Connell, yeah. big firm, a lot of prima donnas, blah, blah, blah. No, yeah. Myrick O'Connell is like a bunch of lawyers with like a Holy Cross attitude, you know? Yep. It's like they work really hard. They get paid well, you know, but it's because they work really hard, right? So anyway, we had done this package of documents for, for a family. And, and often I'll tell folks, I'll say, well, you know, the best package of documents, if you're a couple, is you want to structure things so that if one of you dies, everything is going to go into trust for the benefit of your spouse, so that if they ever need nursing home care, you know, they'll be okay. And then I always tell people, so if one of you is more at risk of dying suddenly, you probably want to put all those documents in that person's name mm -hmm. or put all your property in that person's name. And I had this 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 couple, and they're from the Worcester area, right? And they had real estate, they had quite a bit of real estate. And I said this, and the, the husband had had a heart condition, yeah. right? And so I said, well, while we're doing all this, we probably would have put, want to put the property in the husband's name, yeah. right? So that if he dies suddenly, everything will be safe for the wife. Oh, no, 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 says the husband. We've always done things together, but no problem. So then a couple years later, I'm on Martha's Vineyard. I'm in the line waiting for the ferry to get off of the island. Mm -hmm. And I get a cell phone call from the wife. This is late November, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. My husband, there was a freak snowstorm. My husband was out shoveling. Mm. He fell down on the driveway. Nobody saw him. He was there for a couple of hours. He's now at the ICU in Worcester. He may be dead in two hours, right? Or he may be dead anytime. I said, don't let him die. Yeah. Just let, I'll be right there, right? Yeah. But now because it's Mariko O'Connell, I was able to email one of our associates to have him pull all the deeds off of the registry of deeds, prepare me all the new deeds. They were all ready when I got to Westboro and I was able to drive to the hospital sure. and get the document signed. And he died the following morning, you know? Wow. So, so these are the kinds of things that of course you, you could never do. I could never do before as yep. a sole practitioner, but you can do because it's a big firm. So now, Yes. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. But it's new in Westboro. And, well, and by the way, and thanks for doing these shows. I think, you know, you 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 have said to me, you've said that, you know, you you hear from a lot of folks that are there. Yeah. And I think they're really important. I think they're just really useful for a lot of people. So yeah. what is new in West coming up in Westboro? Well, thank you for being our guest today. I think, um, you know, this is a reminder to me of why we started doing the work that we're doing together and why it's important. And I think it's important. I don't think either one of us sort of want to self-promote our business and the work, but the work we do 
is really important and the services that we provide are are really important to people at the most critical time when they need them and often they don't know enough about them when they need them so right. it's i think a reminder to both of us to circle back on that um on occasion so yeah so in the town um, as folks uh, know, we have town meeting coming up on November 7th. That's going to start at 10 a.m. at Westboro High School. Uh, there are 14 articles on the warrant. Hopefully it goes pretty quickly. We'll be all masked. We'll be safe. Uh, encourage folks to turn out for that. And, of course, our friends at Westboro TV will be uh, broadcasting town meeting live. Um, next week on Frank and Mary, we will have our town manager, Christy Williams, on. She'll talk to us about the budget where are we at? And a little bit about the town meeting warrant. Um, but, you know, we, we won't cover that in detail because folks can go online and look at the warrant. Um, um, and by on, the way, yeah. regarding, regarding the way town meeting is running, is it like the last time that you're kind of putting people in different rooms and yep. so that people can feel comfortable going? There, Absolutely. There's distance. Everybody's yep. got a mask. That's great. Yep. That's great. All, all of that six feet apart, unless you're with, you know, your family unit and you can sit near each other and all that. Um, and then um, on November 11th, we will have um, Andrea Little on to talk to us about uh, the Blue Star Memorial, um, uh, which is a, a new memorial that will be placed here in town. I've been working with Mrs. Little um, on it, and uh, she's a member of the Garden Club and actually has served at a national level um, uh, to place these markers throughout the country. So um, that will be a fun discussion. And we're working on some other cool guests. So um, things are good in Westboro. Um, our numbers fun. are are good right now for COVID. Um, unfortunately, they're on the rise in a lot of places. So we want to stay out of the red. So um, encourage folks to still be kind, wear masks, and uh, wash those hands. We're all in this together. Yes. We're all in this, and this is this is what's really gotten to people. We're all in this together. Yeah. So Shelby, thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah. Right. Uh, and thanks for being a great co-host. You're just wonderful. It's just these shows are just so much fun. I can't Likewise. stand. And thank you to Aiden. I can, I'm always seeing Aiden, although <laughs> the folks back home aren't seeing him in this little splotch in the corner of the screen. Right. Thanks so much to Aiden for for managing to pull these off constantly and just doing a great job. Of, so we really appreciate it. We really appreciate it. So thank you all. Hope we hope you enjoy this. I hope you weren't too bored with the guest this week. <laughs> Uh, and we'll look forward to seeing you both next week on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Bye-bye.